We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Roach Show. Turn up your mind. McCarthy's saying he's not going to change the plan. He changed it overnight. The Senate has said this is dead on arrival, but it's still important because House Republicans will still have to vote on yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. And look, I mean, you couldn't get those Midwestern Republicans without allowing the biofuel tax breaks to stay. And um, there were some there were conservative members uh, of the caucus who really wanted to make sure you could speed up some of these timelines to tie work requirements with Medicaid and some other social uh, programs. So these were things that that really he had to do to get all the, the numbers on board. But that's the political football that the debt ceiling has become here. I mean, the the loser in the football game is the American people and American living standards, right? I mean, this is what we know we're facing. And we're facing this a lot sooner than we thought. I mean, tax receipts are down something like 35 percent from the oh same time uh, last year. That means less money is coming in in the tax season. And that money is being used to pay the bills because after January 19th, we couldn't borrow any more money. So this is really incredibly important. That's fascinating. And it's coming much sooner than we thought. So early June is this so-called X date. And they're running out of time for a compromise here. I mean, it is just unbelievable. You you know, you put anything in Republican hands and they uh, just mess it up. They uh, screw it up real bad. You know, it's not that they have no ideas. It's that all their ideas are bad. They're bad ideas. I mean, who thought banning books was a good idea other than, uh, you know, a bunch of Republican governors? Really, who thought that, you know, arguing over bathrooms for children was going to solve any American's problem if you had a problem on uh, wages or crime or inflation? Who really thought that that debate was going to solve the problem of, you know, paying uh, too much at the gas pump or $9 for a carton of eggs? Really, who thought that? Who thought that, uh, you know, telling uh, parents uh, or uh, that, that, that their teachers aren't allowed to say the word gay was going to solve any of the uh, mass shootings that we see in the United States, right? Or banning abortion was going to save women's lives, you know, literally pulling back on health care for women was literally going to, uh, you know, put a nickel in your pocket. It was going to make you freer. It was going to make you happier. It was going to make you more secure in your situation in the United States, really. And this whole argument about the Food and Drug Administration and Mifepristone, a 23-year-old drug, who thinks that's going to solve any of the to-do list problems that you may have voted on in the midterms or in 2020? Who thinks that saves democracy? Who thinks that, uh, you know, having no ethics at the Supreme Court is a really good ignorable problem you see what i mean they don't have uh you know uh, good ideas they have ideas but they're all bad ones this is the problem and so today they're sitting there playing chicken with the full faith and credit of the united states of america honestly last night at about 9 9 30 idiot boy matt gets okay uh can i see your venmo please Idiot boy Matt Getz was on the TV talking, you know, now we have uh, revolving hosts, you understand? Everybody, oh, Tucker's out, let's, uh, you know, let's just move all the, uh, you know, placemats. Let's just change the seats at the table. Let's just, uh, you know. So now, I, I, I mean, at 8 o'clock I got Michael Smirkanish on CNN. Really, this is what I have here? Or was that uh, Don Lemon's seat? That I can't keep track. Everybody's uh, very busy saying, that's the problem, let's get rid of that. OK. And so, you know, you had Tucker Lee. Tucker, I think, is in Florida driving around in a golf cart, having lunch with his wife, celebrating his newfound freedom and uh, collaborating, uh, you know, uh, on the sly, on the side with his executive producer to figure out what their next move will be. Must be nice. Uh, I swear to God, that that's what he's doing. Uh, that's all he's doing. And, and hiring, you know, like one of the most, uh, you know, uh, awesome lawyers to argue that he does he shouldn't have to do a non-compete i'm guessing and that he wants a severance package uh you know not uh commensurate with him staying off the air see in my day uh you know like non-competes i'm telling you they are the most bizarre horrible horrific anti-law and anti-labor things you could ever ever agree to but uh, in my day, they were there, and either you signed the contract with that in there, or you didn't. And they were enforced like they were ironclad. Today, the Supreme Court's actually sitting around saying, you know, we don't think that that's uh, very, um, 
constitutional. I, I never thought it was. But here, here, you know, that what they do is they hand you your severance check and they make you sign a waiver saying you will never sue them. And also that your non-compete now kicks in and you can't work for X amount of months or, or, or a year or whatever it is. But, you know, we'll pay you. So now I'm sure Tucker, who is rich, like really stinking rich, like an heir to the Swanson fortune, uh, and his dad is uh, was a, a, a journalist, or I think his dad was a newscaster. So anyway, he comes from a, a family that he himself describes as just, you know, so wealthy that he doesn't have to work. He doesn't need to work. Uh, and so he's taking the, uh, his time to sue them, to sue them, so he can get a, um, you know, like a, a Megyn Kelly settlement. You know, what, like $90 million or some crazy amount of money? Anyway, so now there's like revolving chairs. So I'm watching uh, 9 o'clock, it was, on CNN, and I guess it's Michael Smirkanish in their lame attempt to just play it down the middle. Like Poppy Harlow is ultra-political. Or somehow Don Lemon saying the obvious truth that the NRA was not supportive of uh, black people owning guns. <laughs> and we know that because the only time, the one singular time the NRA was against people and was for gun legislation, was for limiting who can own a gun, was after Bobby Seale and the Black Panthers uh, went to the uh, Capitol in, in California at Sacramento uh, with a... Um, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, some sort of a, a, a menacing looking weapon strapped around his neck. And the NRA actually said to, uh, you know, Ronald Reagan, who was governor at the time. Yeah, yeah. No, no. We'll, we'll support you in gun regulations. We, we can't have this. We just can't have this. But so Don Lemon points that out to somebody and uh, he's fired. Really? And he points out that Nikki Haley is 51 years old in, in a ham fisted way, you know, in a ham handed way. And uh, that's why he's fired? Really? This is what I'm supposed to believe? So everybody's playing musical chairs. But last night at 9 o'clock, Smirkanish is interviewing uh, Matt Getz in this lame effort to appeal to Republicans who might, <laughs> who might watch CNN. Did you forget the CNN sucks era? Did you forget that the media was the enemy of the people and this is the Republican position on your network, Mr. Licht? Yes, we know when we're licked all over. And we are. But anyway, Getz was saying, we're not going to vote on this uh, freaking debt ceiling. We're not going to raise the debt ceiling. We want work requirements for 65-year-olds on Medicaid and or food stamps. Now, I could play you that long video that the uh, Washington Post uh, actually recorded of, I'll say, not in their prime senior men sitting on food lines with their little chihuahua. Remember that guy? And during the COVID pandemic, he was able to get like $230 in SNAP benefits. And now that the COVID is not a pandemic, it's just endemic uh, and somewhat uh, treatable and under control in a certain weird way. Uh, there's no more emergency. And so they cut the benefits back down to like $22 a month. And the guy was in line for hours in rural Kentucky waiting for a bag of potatoes because he couldn't afford his food. This is who they're going after. This is who Matt Getz wants to penalize. You know the math. He can lose, he, Speaker McCarthy, can lose four. Right now, how many holdouts are there, yourself included? Twice that. So I do not expect that there will be a vote as planned tomorrow on the McCarthy debt limit increase. I think there are still a few details we have to work out on work requirements on some of the Green New Deal tax credits that uh, we would like to see repealed. And there's Wait, uh, some disagreement in our conference about that. And if we're able to get that done, uh, I don't think it'll be tomorrow. I think that there's still some time for the cement to dry. So but it may eight. very well be that what we send out of the House of 218 votes is the only thing we can get 218 votes for. Uh, Mr. Schumer and uh, President Biden should take note of that. Take note of what? I, honestly, so he, he is very busy saying that he's a no on raising the debt ceiling unless the Inflation Reduction Act is gutted and there's work requirements placed on SNAP benefits for people 59 to 65. Now, where in rural Kentucky is a 65-year-old man supposed to find a job in order to get SNAP? Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.